Hi and welcome back. Now if you've been following my videos I think you'll agree that it could be said that I'm a bit obsessed about low light and ISO performance especially with Nikon Z range. Now before you say oh no he's going to do another one of those videos and switch off I promise you that this is probably the last time that I'm going to talk about the low light capabilities of both the Z8 and Z9. Well maybe because as you've seen in my various videos, if you've been watching them, I've swung backwards and forwards on the subject, to be quite honest. So I reckon now's the time to put it to bed, hopefully. This time I was set off when I spotted someone online who asked, the ISO on the Z9, is it as bad as I've heard? Well, I couldn't leave that unanswered, could I? The opportunity seemed too good to squander after I was invited to photograph at a dog agility show, which is kind of what I do, last weekend, and the unlikely name Storm Burt forced us inside. The indoor school seemed very well lit to everyone but the photographer, and so I had to use 6400 ISO, 8000 and 10000 ISO. With both cameras all day, I even touched 12,800 a couple of times. So how did I get on with low light in a real world working situation? Well, these images are unedited JPEG copies of the raw files straight out of the camera as normal. And as you can see, they're pretty good. Some, as I said, were taken at 6,400 ISO, which I don't consider particularly high to be honest. 8,000 and 10,000 is much more serious. So, let's look at some 8,000 images. During a day's shooting, I obviously have quite a few more at 8,000, but as a further test, I wanted to see whether there's a difference between the Z8 and the Z9 at the higher settings. And I think the answer to that is not a lot. But I'll keep showing both cameras so we can make a decision at the end of the video. Anyway, so now we've seen 8,000, how about 10,000? As you look at these, you can see the background is pretty dull. The floor gives no reflection and the camera is dealing with a black and white dog moving at speed. The quality is pretty impressive though, isn't it? I can't believe how clean these images look. If we zoom into this one, look at the detail that the camera's captured. Look at the eye. The image of this dark brown spaniel also still retains the detail in its coat. The only hint of high ISO is possibly in the background. But this is 10,000 ISO, don't forget. So up until now, I've been showing you the images straight from the camera. So I think it's about time that I showed you the edited versions. As the slider slowly reveals the edited image, you can see there's a little noise that's more noticeable in the background once again. Of course, increasing exposure during editing can cause more noise. So maybe it's better to use a higher ISO to get the correct exposure in camera. What do you think? If we zoom in, the noise becomes even more obvious. The image has not the detail that the 10,000 ISO captured. I'd expect a better result from a lighter colored dog. They're usually easier. Same dog different image, and unsurprisingly, we see the same issues as previously. If I zoom in, once again, it's obvious the facial details are a little bit soft and the whole thing is noisy. So these images will need some help. And do you know, there's some pretty good AI noise software out there. Though sadly, it won't replace the lost details. So for this video, I'm using the AI noise software that's now in Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm also using Topaz Denoise AI, and I want to see how they compare. Like the name, the noise reduction from ACR is directly applied to the raw file, which then produces a DNG file, I think it is. The Topaz software works straight from a JPEG, which here are already edited. Maybe unsurprisingly, the correctly exposed 10,000 and 8,000 images are marginally better than the 6,400 ones that I then need to the exposure slider pushed to at least a stop and a half in editing. Then they also require whichever noise reduction software you choose. But the difference between the methods is about as close as the difference between the two denoise software systems I'm using. Because let's be 
honest about this, noise reductions come an awfully long way from the days that the results just look, well, plastic. Take this edited image, for instance, bring in the noise reduction and then zoom in. Not that impressed? Well, it's not bad when you see how much it's been cropped by. The Z9 certainly captured the details and both the noise reduction programs have done their job. I still can't see much difference between the Z8 and Z9 in the noise department. Both cameras are, well, pretty capable, aren't they? At 8,000 ISO, both cameras retain detail in the shadows, which is where the noise is usually worse. If you look at the background in both of these images, it's pretty clean considering that it's 10,000 ISO. Oh, and what about the images at 12,800? Well, you've already seen them. Remember this one? The light had dropped even more and Poodle seemed to have fur that resembles a black hole. All light just gets sucked into it. I don't think the camera's done a bad job, has it? I think it's really good. Oh, there's no noise reduction, by the way. And I think that pretty much answers the online question, don't you? Thank you so much for joining me. And if you liked it, then don't forget to like it. And if you really liked it, then subscribe, please do. Uh, if you do subscribe, then thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care.